We can more easily spot a redhead in a crowd than a blonde or brunette. They are few and far between. Only about 1-2% to of the population possesses natural red locks. However, their hair isn't the only thing that sets them apart. Genetic differences can affect everything from their pain threshold to how they react to temperature. Redheads are very different from other people. They may be harder to state than blondes or brunettes and require more anesthesia during surgery. Researchers suspect because the gene belongs to the family group of genes that plays a role in the pain, the mutation causes redheads to be more sensitive to it. Gingers are more likely to be sensitive to cold and hot temperatures than people with different hair colors. Researchers at Louisville University in Kentucky found they were susceptible to pain at around 43 degrees Fahrenheit, unlike those with dark hair who didn't begin to react until the temperature got out of freezing. It's believed MC1R may cause the temperature detecting gene to become overactivated, making redheads colder. Just like everyone else, redheads get their hair color from melanin, which is related to the melanocortin 1 receptor, or the MC1R gene. Redheads simply possess a mutated version of it. This gene gives instructions for making protein receptors located in our melanocytes, special cells that produce melanin, which gives our eyes, hair, and skin their distinct hue. There are two different types of melanin. People containing more eumelanin have darker hair color and skin that tans easier because it is naturally more protected from UV rays. People with more pheomelanin have lighter hair, like blonde or red, and have lighter skin, which lacks the protection from the sun. And it's all up to that MC1R gene what kind of melanin you get. If the gene's activated, then you'll end up with more eumelanin, but if the receptors don't trigger, then you'll end up with the fairer pheomelanin. The gene for red hair is recessive, meaning in order to be born a redhead, both non-redhead parents must be carriers. One parent must be a redhead and the other a carrier, or both parents must be redheads because a person needs two copies of the ginger gene for it to show up or be expressed. But children may still carry the gene. As a result of this, families that have no redheads for decades can suddenly discover redhead in their midst. This Punnett square shows what the chances are that you could be a carrier of the gene, non-carrier, or a redhead based on your parents. For example, my sister is a redhead. You can imagine my parents' shock since neither of them are redheads. But after looking back at the family tree, we discovered that my dad's dad was a redhead and my mom's dad had a red mustache. So based on our Punnett square, that means that both of my parents must have been carriers of the gene since my sister ended up a redhead. Since both of my parents are carriers, that means that there was a 25% chance that my sister was going to be a non-carrier of the gene, 25% chance that she would be a redhead, and a 50% chance that she would be a carrier. I had the same odds, but clearly I'm not a redhead, so that means I'm either a carrier or a non-carrier, and there's no way for me to know unless I get a test done or have a redhead kid of my own. Rumors have been going around for decades that the redhead population is going extinct. Even though this has been proven false, there still seems to be a slim amount of gingers around us. So my message to you is this. Whether or not you're a redhead, you can keep the population going because you might have that sneaky carrier gene in your genetic makeup.